Well, good evening. Wonderful to be with you at Bethlehem Church tonight. Thank you, choir. Beautiful as always, and thank you, Lou Ann, for directing tonight. Which side are you on? You hiding from me? Oh, there she is, <laughs> hiding behind the mic stand. Thank you for directing, and Margie, thank you for helping get our Hillcrest group ready to sing. And I um, always thank Bethlehem Choir for their commitment and loyalty to their church. Every time we're together and I see the choirs, I, every time I always invite them to leave Bethlehem and join Hillcrest, <clears throat> but none of them ever do. So I appreciate their loyalty to, um, to your ministry here. Matt, good to be with you. Thank you for hosting our congregation. Thank you for your kind introduction. Although Matt threw me under the bus a little bit, you know, we do take our annual pastor's group retreat to the beach, and I always tell my deacons we sit around and translate one of the New Testament books in Greek, but <clears throat> that doesn't sound too funny, does it? But we do have a good time fellowshipping and, and um, talking about church work and sermons, and uh, we, um, we do throw in a lot of humor in the process, and it's good to be glad Matt is here and he's able to join our monthly pastors group. We have a wonderful time. Well, if you have your Bibles with you tonight, uh, please turn to Luke chapter 17. I'm going to begin in verse 11, read you a very familiar Thanksgiving story, share a few thoughts with you on, on this week before we enter this season of Thanksgiving. If you don't have your Bibles, that's okay. I'll read this or you could look it up on the app of your smartphone and um, probably find it there and give you a chance to make sure they're turned off. <clears throat> Luke chapter 17, beginning with, uh, with verse 11. The Bible says, On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. As, and as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to them, him, get up and go your own way. Your faith has made you well. The word of the Lord tonight. Well, Luke tells this story that we're very familiar with about the ten lepers who uh, Jesus meets on the side of the road and um, they see Jesus. The first thing that I, that I recognize when I read this story in light of, of what Thanksgiving really means is when these ten lepers first come in contact with Jesus, when they see him, uh, when they try to call out to them, look at their proximity. The Bible says that they're keeping their distance. They're keeping their distance. They're away from him. They're uh, not close. They're uh, not um, in close proximity. But in a far away, maybe, of course, they're respecting that they have this illness. They're not supposed to be close to any other human beings at this time. We can appreciate, appreciate that with the Ebola crisis that we've just gone through. And, and uh, you know, you can imagine the fear that was there in Jesus' day. So out of respect and out of not getting in trouble, they stay away. But it's from this distance that the Bible says they, they cry out to Jesus, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Now when you think about that in a, in a theological sense, I thought about that. You know, I don't think we have to be very close to Jesus when we cry out to him for mercy, do we? When we petition him. Sometimes we cry out to mercy to our Lord because we've moved far away from him. Maybe it's not from something as serious as leprosy, but 
maybe all of a sudden we, we wake up or we look at uh, where we are in life right now and, and we say, you know, I, I wake up and, and I realize I'm just removed from the presence of my Lord. My faith is not as strong as it should be. We wake up and we realize maybe we have a great physical need. We find ourselves ill. We find a, a family member that we're worried about. We have a, a difficult problem in life that we're trying to discover an answer to. And we don't feel very close to God. Maybe we're an unbeliever. And we've never cried out for mercy to Jesus ever. But you know, I think that when we petition God, when we ask God for something that we need in our own personal lives, we don't have to be very close. God hears us. And that's the great thing about our Lord, is that He hears us in our need, He hears us in our weakness, He hears us when we're far away. Even when we're, we're so far away that we may not even have a personal relationship with Him, the Bible says if we cry out, for Jesus to have mercy on us and forgive us of our sin and, and even give us salvation, the Lord hears our cry, doesn't he? No matter how far removed that we are. And that happens with all ten of these lepers. And Jesus hears their cry of mercy. He hears their prayer of petition. Lord, grant me this. Lord, I need this. Lord, give me this. We pray those prayers all the time. It may be our main form of prayer or our favorite form. And Jesus hears them and, and he says, go your way and show yourself to the priest. And, and they begin to, to go to the synagogue and, and they look down and, and the Bible says immediately, miraculously, the leprosy disappears. And they're healed and they're whole and, and, and they, they realize that, that Jesus, it's not just hearing their cry for mercy. He's done something about it. And he's given them something wonderful in their life. And, and, and they're so excited that, that Jesus has granted them this prayer of need, this prayer of petition, that he's blessed them in their life, that as we all would, man, they just joyfully take off running. I'd be running back to my home, wouldn't you? I'd be running back to my family. Maybe that's where they were going. Maybe they're running back to their normal lives. Lord, you've, you've healed me of this illness. It's been a struggle. It's been a battle. But thank you for letting me get better. And then all of a sudden, a few weeks later, we realize we've run back to our normal routine. And the Lord may even be far away from us once again. And so they run, and, and they're moving, it seems, even further away from the Lord, even though he's granted their cry for mercy. But one, in the midst of his running, one in the midst of realizing he's been shown mercy, the Bible says, stops and slows down. And I think he, he contemplates what's just happened. That, that moments ago, his situation was that he was a leper. Moments ago, he was ostracized by his society. Moments ago, he could have no fellowship. Moments ago, he had no future. Moments ago, he had a death sentence. But unlike the others, he, he realizes that before he met Jesus, he was a lot worse off than when he just prayed to Jesus and Jesus had granted his plea and come into his life. He realizes how drastically his life has changed for the better since he's been healed. And whether Jesus heals us physically or whether Jesus heals us spiritually or emotionally, I don't think that prayer's over until we've contemplated that a little bit and realize how grateful we are and show that gratitude back to our Lord. So he stops in his tracks from running away from Jesus and he alone heads back towards him. He returns to praise God. He returns to give thanks to Jesus for coming into his life and for changing him forever. 
And the Bible says Jesus is moved. Jesus recognizes that, that he's the only one, even though he's a Samaritan, someone that shouldn't have. He's the only one that comes back with a humble heart of praise and thanksgiving. You know, if we are a believer in Jesus Christ, and we've been forgiven of our sins, our lives have forever been changed, haven't they? Forever. We have cried out for mercy. We, our prayers have been heard. We have received a miracle of healing. And this miracle of healing has left us with eternal life and the promise of heaven forever with our Lord. Wow. We, for the rest of our lives, with that sense of peace, with that sense of assurance of our salvation, can live out our days that's beyond the world's understanding, can't we? No matter what the world throws at us, no matter what difficulties we may have, no matter what doubts arise, no matter what stress or problems, deep within our hearts, we know what Jesus has done for us. And we can have an eternal assurance. The question is, how can we be like this one healed leper, this Samaritan? How can we thank Jesus for what he's done for us? Or do we just thank him when he comes into our hearts and, and do we just say, well, Lord, I, I'm going to come to church once a week and, uh, and thank you during the prayer time, during my Sunday school class, while I sing a hymn, while I listen to a beautiful anthem by the choir, and then I'm just probably going to go out and live uh, the rest of my days and the rest of my years as I want without any gratitude. Intentionally deciding to thank Jesus with our whole life, with as much of our time that, that we can muster, to me is what Thanksgiving is all about. And this time of the year, this week, uh, before we really get into the Advent season, reminds us not only to give thanks unto Jesus one time, but every day of our life, doesn't it? They cried for mercy from afar. The thankful leper comes back and prostrates himself before our Lord in close proximity, doesn't he? And thanks Jesus in person. I think we can ask God for things from afar. We can ask for mercy when we're hurting and when we don't understand and we don't feel very close to God. But to thank God, we've got to get close to him. It's hard to do that just from the temple and Jesus out somewhere far away, doesn't it? We have to draw close to the presence of our Lord Sure, we can thank Jesus during our prayer time. We can thank Jesus in our weekly worship. But I think like this leper, Jesus loves us to thank him in our everyday life and in our daily activities as well. I think thanksgiving requires some action on our part and not just words. I think that leper had to turn and come the other way make some very humble steps, and he had to do some very active things to really thank Jesus in a worshipful sense, didn't he? So I think it's when we carry out Jesus' work we thank him. Every time that you minister to somebody in Jesus' name, you thank him. Every time that um, you are asked and give sacrificially, back to the Lord, you really thank him. When you find yourself in those moments when 
you think of others first before yourself? When you do unto others as you want them to do unto you, you live out your faith and you thank him. Whenever you share with somebody else the good news of the gospel, you thank him. So I just encourage you that during this season of thanksgiving that rolls right into Advent, I challenge you to act out your thanksgiving to the Lord. Maybe um, give food to some folk that don't have enough to eat. If your church is like our church, maybe you have an angel tree. Give to a child. Give to a family that really needs something this year. Share the gospel with others. Give so that gospel can be carried not only in your church, but in your community, your nation, and around the world. Pray to the Lord and come back and draw close to him and really ask God, God, how can you use me not only in this season of Thanksgiving, but, it, but in the coming year? How can I be on mission for you each and every day? You see, I believe Thanksgiving goes deeper than just saying thank you. Thanksgiving is about our actions. It's about our attitudes. It's about our behaviors. So may we be like this, um, this one Samaritan leper who was cleansed. And in our rushing and in our hustle and in our bustle this holiday season, may we catch ourselves if we get too far away from our Lord and may we return to him, maybe physically, maybe spiritually. And may we fall down before him. And may we thank him and follow that, that prayer of thanksgiving with living out a life of thanksgiving for him. I think you'll find that all year long will be a season of thanksgiving. Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for your word from your life. And Lord, um, I ask forgiveness in my own life when I just run too far from you or too far ahead of you and just don't pause to, to live in a season, a, a life, an attitude of thanksgiving. Lord, I thank you for these two churches, your people that are represented and I, um, I pray for each family that they may have a blessed Thanksgiving, a blessed Advent and Christmas season. But Lord, that you stay in the midst of it, not just in thought only, but in action, Christian action. And may Bethlehem and may Hillcrest be a light in the midst of a world that sees a lot of darkness. And may they see, and may it be, the light of Jesus Christ. For it's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen.